Good morning. I'm wearing my blue Clint, a Clint Eastwood Pancho. Isn't that nice? One of my thousands of thousands of female fans, supporters, not fans, friends. I hate that word, fans. This gave me knitted herself. Create, be talented. And it's perfect for the day. I don't know what this whole thing about the worst heat wave in Europe is, because, and even in England. It's absolutely, it's still chilly and cold here in the west of Ireland. So it's perfect for the day. Just a little bit of, a little bit of uh, comfort, stylish comfort. Blue is definitely my colour, absolutely. Now, uh, I'd make a great man, I'd make a great gay man. Except I'm terrible at interior design. Now, we're running. Serious topic now. Let me get under the tree. Create an atmosphere. Now, in recent years, one of the things that's become apparent to me is the difference between non-English speaking witches and English speaking witches. There's a huge difference. I would have to go as far as saying that now, I'm not putting down people who are members of Wicca. Remember that. There's nothing wrong with being in a group. And if that's what, that's what makes your life easier and makes you feel good. And that's great. That's, that's cool. But Wicca is not traditional witchcraft. It's just not. It's, it's more like a, a female Freemasonry. Now, Wicca... If you were to look at witches, if, like it's got, if I was to say who are the witches in the English speaking world, I'd say they're generally women who work, and gay men, who are solitary practitioners. The hedge witch kind of idea. And that's also another aspect of witches in this part of the world. It tends to be a, a very much a rural focus, a rural or a small town or a village focus. And that's just how it just developed. It's, no, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just going to say this is the difference now. So usually the witches that I find that have the real power in UK, Ireland, USA, Canada, Australia tend to be solitary. And they tend to be from a kind of... A lot of them come from like the punk rock or the goth music scene or they were involved in things like that. And they're not feminists. Definitely, absolutely not. They don't hate men, they act the opposite, they adore men. And this is what brings me to the European witches. Now, the European witches are very, very different. They live in groups and always in cities. And I'll tell you how this came about. And they refer to themselves under the title of not of hag, not of maven, not of crone. They call themselves mothers, even if they don't have mothers. And this is what they see themselves as, the mothers of men. If I was to describe in a piece of artwork the relationship a European witch has with a man, I would sit, I would point to Michelangelo's statue of the Paita, you know the one of Mary holding her son, dying son? That's There's nothing rabbinical or Christian about it. That's very much an Italian, classical, pagan, European portrayal of Jesus Christ and his mother. Well, not Jesus Christ, that was Rabbi Yeshua, but that's what, it, that's what inspired it. That special bond is central to witches in Europe. They have a great love for men. You would never get a feminist witch in Italy or in France or in Spain. It just wouldn't happen. You would, get, uh, you would not get that. They tend to live in small groups, the ones I know, in Turin anyway. Uh, but actually, this is how they are everywhere. And this is, there's a reason why they live in cities and small groups. They are generally women who are approaching menopause or past menopause. There's very few childbearing age women in these groups. Although, in, living with them, I mean, they may have like ones on the outside they're friends with and stuff like that. They generally... I wouldn't say do charity work, but they encourage the arts big time. So a lot of them are involved in getting, setting up things like scholarships uh, for young artists, actors, this kind of thing. They are basically connected to, they create lots of money uh, through their, through their enchantments. They create lots of money. They don't steal it. They don't swindle it. They are often very, very wealthy. 
They live in luxury, expensive uh, townhouses and villas in the centre of uh, European cities. They live simply, they don't, they drink an awful lot, oh my god, do they drink, and uh, they are very, they are extremely maternal. They adopt men as sons, uh, they take care of them, and not pathetic men, not, uh, you know, fuck, I'm so depressed, I want to kill myself, they have no time for men like that, they consider them worms and maggots, which they are. They would be men who would be have been abused growing up, men who would have been in wars and crippled, and they mothered them. And during wars, see, this is okay. This I guess this, this is we're going to I'm going to piss off the Protestants here now, but the main reason they exist in cities today as the, these mothers of enchantment is because of the Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Reformation was a European version of Orthodox Judaism based on the works of Rabbi Yeshuva of Nazareth. And they, Martin Luther was an absolute diabolical beast, an insane madman who saw witches and Jews and Catholics trying to kill him constantly. Now, the, now do you remember when I was in Hanover and uh, Lucifer's present made himself known to me? You also remember the church on the same day, the night before the church, the market church, the market kish in Hanover with the inverted pentagram. Well, the Lutherans put that up there because the witches, see, witches were slaughtered by Protestants on a scale like unbelievable. If you go to the countries where the witches were slaughtered the most, it was, and I know people go think that Catholics get to blame for this. The Catholic Church and the Jesuits don't really care about witches. They're not bothered by them. Protestants live in, and particularly Lutherans, uh, live, uh, live in absolute terror of witches and want them all destroyed and that comes directly from the Old Testament so that's why the Market Square Church in in Hanover had the inverted pentagram they were they were being they were having they were being so hexed by the witches they were trying to kill and killing that they were under um, unbelievable psychic attacks they were getting diseases skin diseases they were dropping dead and that kind of thing if you look at where all the, the horrific holocausts of witches happened, Germany, Sweden, Finland, and Scotland. In Ireland, there was almost zero persecution of witches, and where they happened were in English planter places like uh, Fermoy in County Cork, Presbyterian, of course, and uh, Kilkenny. In they were Protestant. They were pro they were not. They were more Protestant English planter experiences than Irish experiences. Witches were never considered a problem. It's still not considered a problem in Ireland. It's part of our culture, and uh, it, it, it's not. It's not something. We're like typical of Catholic countries that haven't been converted. Witches are fine. They're not see seen as a problem. It's the Presbyterians who are seen. Now the only, that's not, that brings us to the only, and this is all the only. Now to couple those two things together, the reason why Churchill fired one of the primary reasons Churchill, a member of the Druid Order of Great Britain, which are all Anglicans, you know, that's why all these fellows you see a Stonehenge dressed like Anglican bishops, because that's what they're really representing the Anglican Church. And one of the reasons he firebombed Dresden's is because it was where there was no armaments or military reason for Dresden and military historians say why did why did why did Churchill exterminate Dresden with such absolute zeal and viciousness it's because that's where all the witches were they were in the German uh, hospitals taking care of the injured civilians and soldiers because that's what they do they have this healer thing they were mothers looking after sons the Paita statue again and they would be the ones who would comfort in the World War One, World War Two. These witches would comfort dying men, or also civilians, holding their hands, young boys, and be the mother at the end. That's what they're like. Their compassion is tremendous, and this is why they'll not, they're not feminists or anything. They absolutely adore men. Ab mad for them. Mad for them. And uh, when I visit them, it's like uh, I'm, it's like a little boy has come to visit them, and it's like they 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 they, they fall over themselves. And it's beautiful. It's not just me. It's it's any man that they they become friends with, and uh, relationship wise, they don't have they don't have relationships. They have lots of sex. They have passionate love affairs. 
but they see relationships as codependencies. And this is why you see like the the Presbyterian English speaking witch, which remember that's really what we're dealing with here, the Wiccan type. This is why they spend half their time hexing their exes or men that didn't want them. Because they're codependent. They they're codependent. They're not standing in their own power as women. Where these European witches don't need a relationship. So what they their their attitude is it's better to have like a passionate affair that lasts a weekend than uh, 20 years with some guy. And because it's more magical. Now you think back on your life, all the most amazing things that happened, you were short periods with one guy or one woman. It was, it, you know, that was the ones you remember when, when you grow old. And that's what they, and they're, they're right in that in many ways. So they're, they, they're not like uh, men are all bastards, very much the opposite. It's also a strong maternal thing. It's powerful. They... They, uh, they're they're very sexually honest and they're very sexually uh, passionate. It uh, and it's not like uh, it's not slutty. It's not smutty. It's like a man and a woman are t- are meant to be together this way. But add, you know, but they don't believe that they believe that a woman has the most power. And lots of women tell you this, is when they're, they become widows or divorced or something like that. If they process it properly and don't spend their time, uh, you know, pa- c- putting cursing oil on that they got from the wicker shop or doing lemon spells against their exes, you know, in a state of wild hysteria, uh, or running smear campaigns on the internet because they have no magic themselves. And so that's what that's like. Uh, they're, they're very different. They... They, a lot of them also, a lot of them, one of the reasons they're wealthy is also property acquisitions. They own, you'll see they live in a beautiful townhouse, say in the centre of Turin or the centre of Nice. It's the same cities as the Devil's Triangle. Nice, I'll tell you where they're concentrated. Nice, Turin, Budapest, San Francisco, Paris, Basel, Basel in, in Switzerland and a few other places. London is, used to be, but that's, London is a dying city. Uh, it's becoming a caliphate. But uh, there's no place for them there now. And they're so... Uh, that's where you find them. I don't think there was ever... Um, well, they didn't need to be in Dublin because the witches in the countryside here were never persecuted. They were... They, they never had to flee to the cities to stop themselves from being burned and, and, and mashed and killed. And... Uh, their main enemy, the main enemy of these witches, these European witches on earth, are Presbyterian churches, and they've successfully destroyed them. You look at the, you look at you at the, you know, you had the Reformation and the Hundred Years' War afterwards, and you had uh, Presbyterianism became very powerful. There were as many Protestants in Europe as there was Catholics. Presbyterianism is dead now. Lutheranism is a joke religion. You go into a Lutheran cathedral and there's five people there during the Christmas Mass. You go to it, if, it, if, you go, if, it, if it wasn't for their property acquisitions, those Lutheran churches and most of the Presbyterian churches around the world, even St. John the Divine in New York, that's all supported by a handful of wealthy patrons. They, they, get very, you, they don't have one thousandth of the power that the Catholic Church in New York has under St. Patrick's. The same in, in Liverpool. You see Paddy's Wigwam, the modern Catholic basilica built in the 1960s. And then you have the Gothic... Uh, Anglican Church, St. George's, they don't have half the power the Catholic Church has, and it's not because there's more Catholics in the city. The 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 Protestants have been under attack by witches all all, all the time, and they they ever since Martin Luther, there's been a a vendetta by the mothers against the Presbyterian religions, and that's why Presbyterian religions are insane. I mean, you look at the Anglican religion today; it's like cross dressing transgender lesbian uh, priests who do dance the C&C music factory on the, on the pulpit because they're so liberal and there's absolutely no spirituality or anything involved in it. The majority of them don't even believe in God. They're more interested in things like social issues like, uh, you know, diversity politics and anything spiritual. They're dead inside. And that's all because of the, the mothers have been crucifying them <laughs> the, the liberally ever since. The European... And it's, also, if you know someone who's not actually involved in magic or witchcraft and they, and, and, and they fit the profile of someone I'm talking about, they're an instinctual witch. They're an instinctual witch. And so, uh, that's the... That's the thing with these uh, these European witches being very, very different than the... Uh, the English-speaking witches. I just mango bite.
than the than the English speaking witches that they uh, their their primary enemy is Presbyterianism. They adore men. They they don't practice rituals. Oh, it's another one I meant to talk about. The ritualism the ritualism that they practice is completely different than the Freemasonic rituals you get in the like of uh, and I'm not putting down Freemasonry either everything has its place I'm, de I'm definitely putting down what they call Druidry in England that was Presbyterian that's all bollocks that is uh, what I'm really putting th what they do is they they work it's amazing really telekinesis this is what they really work on uh, ESP being able to speak in nonverbal ways hypnotism is a big one and um, they're very, very good at maths, business, and money. Very, very good at that. A lot of them are successful businesswomen. They, a lot of them are in shops and things like that, that kind of thing. A lot of them are in the fashion industry. And uh, they have... They, they love being women, but they love the idea of the woman being the mother of the men of the world. And that's why they do things during wartime and take go look after soldiers who are sick and dying. It's a beautiful thing, actually. It's extru they're, they're, they will be, they will drink, smoke, fuck, uh, whenever they want, total freedom, and then, when the men are weakened or the men are suffering, they will be the first to run to the men's aid, and that makes that's the, between that and the fact that they're urban and the fact that they're at war with Presbyterians. The religions, not the Presbyterian people, the the head the head of the, the Presbyterian Church. They've destroyed. They've successfully destroyed the Lutherans. The Lutherans are completely insane now. They're finished as a as a as a religion. Uh, they've no way problem with the Catholics. Many of them are Catholics. That's amazing. And will go to Catholic things, but they won't. They don't. Uh, it doesn't control them. It doesn't control them. And uh, and so it's like uh, this is also one of the reasons why the Martin Luther and the rest of them all wanted to hate the Catholics and destroy them because the witches often found refuge among the Catholics. It was the Catholic priests and bishops who often... You see, this is the thing... This, you hear, it's the shit you hear from, like, Wiccans in England and in Ireland. Oh, the Catholic Church has oppressed women. There wouldn't be a witch left in this part of the world if it wasn't for the Catholic Church. Or they'd be hiding... They'd be living in secrecy in cities uh, as these mother groups because they wouldn't have... Because they, they ought to try and save their lives. So you have to remember it was the it was it was Presbyterian religions because of this madman, and that's also why Martin Luther, and that's also why Churchill bombed Dresden to kill the witches. The la that was a firing, it was a burning of the last of the witches of Germany. Him being a good Anglican minister, Presbyterian druid. That's what he was. Druidry. This is d d d don't. This, uh, now these they, they, that whole I'm not talking about that all people who practice druidry are like this. That that professional societies or council the ones who dress in the white gowns are dressed like uh, where the fucking uh, what you got the, 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 the tiaras and call themselves you know you know Maryland and stuff like that and they're like accountants and lawyers and businessmen and stuff like that and they're all good good God fearing Anglicans and Presbyterians and Lutherans and Church of Ireland types free Presbyterians they're all bollocks. In fact, they may have even been invented to attack and destroy the last of the mothers. Uh, certainly, Churchill had a go at them in Dresden, and but he he failed. And they're here with us, and we should be thankful for them. And uh, so, don't get hung. You know, if you if you know a bunch of Wiccans and they're nice people, nothing wrong with that. But don't get hung up. I love this. Absolutely love this. Don't get hung up on the idea that what you know from English-speaking world is the be-all and end-all of witchcraft. It's not. There's a whole other world. And a whole other, oh, another great big place with it is Buenos Aires in Argentina. A lot of Sicilian and Nepalese witches went there too. Not out of persecution, just as part of the emigration thing. And uh, in America, it was San Francisco. It's I don't know where it is now. Well, it's definitely not somewhere like Sedona. So uh, think, we want to know what a European witch is like. Think of the Paita statue by Michelangelo and you've nailed it perfectly. See us and take care.